mostly it's her dedication and how she was in the field when there were not very many women, if women at all that were prominent. Um, I think she gave a voice to another generation. The new things that she discovered about them eating meat and then the um, discovery with the mother-daughter duo and all of those things that I watched her in the late 70s, early 80s and I saw possibilities. You know, I didn't have to be a man in the 1800s to be an explorer, but there was still exploring to be done. As a little girl, thinking about growing up and going to the jungle just seemed like, yes, yeah, that's something I want to do. And there was one particular image that really was burned into my mind. It's this picture of her and she's sitting on a hillside and it's just her and her binoculars and a notebook, and that's it. I mean, she's just out in a jungle, living outside of the limitations that society puts on women. She just seemed so adventurous and so cool. And, you know, just at a very young age, I just thought, you know, I want to do that and I want to be just like Jane. You know, just completely enamored with her, like a lot of young girls were. Her story is just as cool as her research. Jane Goodall has actually had a huge influence on my life. I used to work at the LA Zoo, and way back then we were trying to transition the chimpanzees into a new uh, enclosure. So I read all of Jane's books and uh, she actually ended up consulting on building this project. And our, our goal was to look at the enclosure from the point of view of the chimpanzees, not just the humans that would watch the chimpanzees, make sure they had enrichment in their lives, lived a more natural life. She was an inspiration because she was able to set out goals for herself and actually achieve them. And at the time, there were certain roles that were social constructs for women. And she was able to work her way through those and do what she wanted to do. From a young age, I knew that I wanted to do something in the field working with animals. As a kid, it was basically either work at a zoo or be a veterinarian seemed kind of like the only two options you had. She just did so much amazing research with the chimps and so many things that we didn't know about animals we learned from her um, 60 years ago when she started that chimps use tools and chimps have, you know, emotions and relationships. And I think she just really broadened the animal field for so many of us in so many different ways through her research. Personally, her inspiration comes by way of how she got into her career through empathy. I mean, she, she was started by something that she loved to do, she turned it into an academic career. But she didn't start in academics, she started by observing. Well, when I first came to the Natural History Museum as a docent in 1979, uh, we were required to write a, essentially a term paper on one aspect of the museum. And I chose chimpanzees because I'd been reading Jane Goodall's latest book about her experiences in Gombe. She has been a real inspiration for me because uh, she did all the things that I would have liked to have done. <laughs> uh, traveled to Africa and done the research and uh, Instead, I had to live vicariously through her books. I think Jane Goodall is multifaceted. So as a science communicator, she inspires people to be curious and connect with nature. I think that we can all relate to that. Then as an academic, she's inspired me to do research, sometimes seeing data or nature in a new perspective can provide us the opportunity to get to questions that see things in a new way like she did with the chimps up Gombe and also she inspired a generation of women before me that trained me. I had women on my master's and PhD committees that were all led and, and inspired by Jane Goodall so her legacy is now multi-generational. She moved as a young woman out into the middle of uh, Tanzania and decided to, you know, with you know, some support, live amongst the chimpanzees. I mean, that was absolutely unheard of at the time, not only for a woman, but also for many primatologists that were working in the field. Um, she, at that time, also went against convention and used what she thought was appropriate for the methods that she did. And she was, ended up changing primatology, ended up changing how people think about the study of primates, think about particularly the study of chimpanzees. Me as a woman, 
woman that's, I'm an archaeologist, I'm in a field that also was relatively male dominated or had been. Um, and I definitely credit her and women like her that have the um, just grit and the, the stamina and just the belief in themselves to follow through with what they what they what they truly want to do with themselves and what they know that they're good at. So I think growing up as a girl, the most inspiring thing for me about her story was kind of the adventure and the opportunity to go and just live your life in a really wild place and interacting with wild animals that most people don't know much about. Well, as a kid who loved animals, Dr. Jane Goodall always seemed to be the epitome of who I wanted to be when I grew up. I remember seeing footage of her working with chimps in Gombe and thinking, wow, that's a really cool job. And I don't know, maybe one day that could be me. In particular, her research inspires me because she challenged the status quo. Uh, she kind of rethought how research should be done. And um, I think that's an important lesson for us all to think about in regards to our approach to science. 